Welcome to my channel. What we're gonna do is value three stocks and look at their financial ratios. The first company we're gonna look at is US Steel. This is a 27th largest steel producer in the world and the second largest in the US behind Nucor. This company has a market cap of $1.75 billion. That's the value of the company according to the stock market and they're trading at $7.83. The way we calculate the shares outstanding, we take the market cap divided by stock price. That gives us 223 million shares outstanding. And the way to value a company is you have to estimate the future free cash flows, then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. First, we're gonna look at the company's financial information, then we're gonna look at the capital structure, and then we're gonna be able to value the company and come up with the stock price. And then after that, we're gonna look at the financial ratios. So their financials don't look so great. They had negative free cash flow in two years, so that means they're spending more money than they're generating. And they had negative net income in 2016 and 2019. Their revenue looks fairly steady. It did increase quite a bit from 2016 to 17 to 18, but then dropped in 2019. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $3.6 billion of debt, and they pay 3.9% interest on the debt. 47% of the capital structure is debt. The rest is equity, 53%. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. So the market as a whole has a beta of one. This has a beta of 2.49, so the stock is pretty volatile. It moves two and a half times the market. To calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, and that comes out to 21.44%. And their WAC is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, that's 13.18%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. And this estimation was based off of the prior financial information. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $70 million. If we divide that by 223 million shares, we come up with a calculated stock price of 31 cents. It's trading at 783. So the stock is trading way higher than their financials indicate. Let's see what simply Wall Street values the company at. They're at 80 cents a share. So they're also saying the stock is way overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. It looks like it was trading in the low 40s a couple of years ago, but has been dropping a lot ever since. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a negative PE, a great price to sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. And they have a negative PE because they have negative net income. And price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They have a great price to sales ratio. I like to see below 2.5, but it doesn't mean too much if you can't convert those sales to profit. The price to book is also really good. That's stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.4. And they have a good current ratio and a bad ROE and a bad interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities so they can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT so they have negative interest coverage ratio. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. Later in this video we're going to do Forex Po and Masabi, and he has U.S. Steel. And if U.S. Steel has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse than the average in PE because they're negative. They do have the best price to sales and price to book. They are worse in current ratio, ROE, and debt. They have the most debt of the three companies. They are the biggest company at 1.8 billion market cap. Next, we're gonna look at Masabi Trust. This company generates income from an iron mine in Minnesota at the eastern end of the Masabi Iron Range. That's how they got their name. And they have a market cap of $263 million, so they're a pretty small company, and they're trading at 1987. And look at their financials, all positive and consistent, really strong, much better than U.S. Steel. 
And look at that profit margins. Almost all that revenue is converted into net income. Because this is not a corporation, this is a trust. So it doesn't have employees, it's a royalty trust. Let's look at a capital structure. Since they're a trust, they have no debt and they're 100% equity. The beta is 0.86, so the stock moves a little less than the market. So the weighted average cost of capital is 8.92%. That's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 671 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $670 million. If we divide that by 13 million shares, we come up with a calculated stock price of almost $51. They're trading at $20, so they're trading at a 61% discount. A lot better than US Steel. Simply Wall Street has them valued at $41. So they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. It looks like it hit the low 30s, but it dropped quite a bit at coronavirus, but came up a little. It looks like it could be a good value stock. Let's look at our financial ratios. Great PE, a weak price of sales, and a weak price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 8.8. .8. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 8.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 22.2. And current ratio is good, an amazing ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They are 254%. That's pretty high. Let's look at the financial ratios. The same two companies I was comparing them to, to US Steel. It's Ferrex Po, Masabi, US Steel. And Masabi is worse than average in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book. But they have the best current ratio, ROE, and they have no debt. But they are the smallest company in terms of market cap for $263 million. The last company we're gonna look at is Ferrex Po. It's a Swiss-based commodity trading and mining company. The mining is done in the Ukraine. This stock trades on the London Stock Exchange, so all the numbers are in British pounds. They have a market cap of a little over 1.1 billion pounds and they're trading at 184. Their financials look really good, healthy, positive, consistent, free cash flow, net income, and their revenue is increasing every single year. So that looks really good. This is the only company of the three that has growing revenue each year. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 539 million pounds of debt, and the interest rate they pay on a debt is 5.55%, and their effective tax rate is 12.25%. So the cost of debt is 4.87%. The way you calculate that is the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. So 23% of that capital structure is debt. The rest is equity. And to calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the London market. And they have a beta of 1.21. So the stock is a little more volatile than the market. And we used a capital asset pricing model to calculate the cost of equity. And that comes out to 11.6%. And their WAC is 10%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and the cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows, that's up here in blue. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 2.7 billion pounds. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of 3.3 billion pounds. We divide that by 598 million shares. And we come up with a calculated intrinsic stock price of $5.46. So it's trading at a 66% discount. So it's a strong buy. Simply Wall Street has them valued at 251. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. It looks like it peaked at about three pounds a few years ago, but it's been up and down ever since. So it looks like a really good value. Let's look at their financial ratios. Great PE, great price to sales, great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have 2.0, I like to see below 15. That's an amazing PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.5. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.6. So investors are paying 60 cents for $1 book value. A book value per share of 303 indicates that if the company went bankrupt today, it will be able to give each shareholder $3.03. .03. 
So the company is worth more in bankruptcy. They have a great current ratio, great ROE, and a great interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity, so they provide a good value to the equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And here are the three companies in the steel industry we're gonna compare them to, Masabi and US Steel. And if Ferexpo has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better than average in every category, except current ratio, but 1.8 is fine. This stock is the best by far of the three companies, but you need to be able to trade on the London Stock Exchange to trade this stock. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll definitely answer. And if you wanna see more videos of me valuing companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.